all right, all right then. So finally, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, so uh, you have, I suppose, if you paid any uh, any attention, even even before you studied mathematics, you might have uh, heard about uh, about the fundamental theorem of calculus. You heard it as conservation of energy. Maybe you heard it as uh, conservation of momentum. You might have seen uh, the Gaussian broker, and uh, if you have, it's a all sorts of uh, probabilities about uh, about let's say when you when you are when you ask me uh, you know to normalize or how do you call it to standardize the test usually it's uh, it's supposed to be under a broker right all those things it relates to the fundamental theorem of calculus but in its naked form the fundamental uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, is a statement about the existence of antiderivatives for continuous functions and hopefully by the end of this lesson you will know it very well so for instance uh, if i ask you to integrate cosine of x dx right if you find uh, the antiderivative of cosine that's what it is right so you can guess it you already you are familiar with functions uh, that give us cosine as derivative so you will guess that this is sine x plus c right and remember from a lecture a few days ago is that uh, there are no exotic uh, functions right so if you found one curve you can you even feel it if you found one curve uh, uh, that satisfies this the differential equation in other words uh, you see, you, you pet sine, and uh, and the tangents uh, of sine will will be if you draw each tangent as a point, they will draw uh, the graph of cosine. Yes. So all other functions are of the form sine x plus c. Remember we spoke about it, yes. So every curve you can just you can imagine drawing a curve uh, out of the tangent. So that's that's uh, that's determined. But on the other hand, suppose that uh, you were asked to find the antiderivative of cosine x squared or e to the minus x squared. I can give you some time to think about it, but the amount of time you will be thinking about it, unless you of course come up with an incorrect answer, it will be probably forever, right? It will, you will not answer this in a month, nor in two months, nor in a year, nor in three years. I mean, you might kind of start looking at the internet, what sort of things are available about it, and you might come up with some sort of uh, strange solution. But in principle, in principle, uh, those are um, functions that don't have an elementary expression uh, or for which there is no elementary expression for the antiderivative. Okay. Uh, well, let me just ask before I, I continue, uh, do those functions have an antiderivative? What do you think? So you see, I, I asked to find the antiderivative of e to the minus x squared or cosine of x squared. And I wonder, again, you can say, of course, yes, no, but I'm all interested in reasoning. Is there, uh, you just look at it, I mean, is the problem just uh, completely nonsensical, right? Or, or must there be an antiderivative? What do you think? So, uh, uh, so Battelle says no. David says yes. Uh, and now, and now, Battelle says. I yes. think yes, also because. Okay, Sarah, why do you think yes? I'm trying to figure out like the best way to say it, but I can't figure it out at the moment. But I, I for sure think that there definitely is a derivative. You see, I want you to try to think of it. Uh, of That's it, what's hard. Of yeah. it uh, intuitively, right? So. Okay. It doesn't necessarily come right away, but uh, but think about it, right? What is it that uh, when you when you have a derivative of something, a derivative it's uh, it, it gives you slope of tangent lines. It basically tells you in it's a point draw or, or like a very short line segment draw a curve there, then another line segment draw a curve draw a line between two points draw a curve there. If you have a plot of slopes, so to speak, then you know uh, how to orient the lines right and the and the lines that you orient they trace a shape they trace a graph do you agree you follow what i'm trying to say right so yeah. uh, when you, when yeah. a function has uh, well, basically when you say here is a is a graph of derivative so each point tells you locally uh, near near that x so for example at x equal to pi over 2 cosine of pi over 2 is 0 so it means that pi over 2 i draw um, a horizontal line segment yes so this is like a blueprint, like if you were to, if you would draw paintings or drawings, 
it's like a blueprint of how to draw the graph. If you get slopes, then you, you, slopes correspond to line segments. Line segments correspond to an outline of the curve. Do you see that, guys, right? So it's like if you ever tried sketching, let's say, a portrait, a face, right? What do you do? You, uh, you, you get yourself, you, you mark uh, line segments, let's say, right? Here is a line segment, there is a line segment. If the line segments are very small, uh, then that will trace uh, the shape of the uh, picture, right? So the fact that I'm giving you a function here for slopes, where, where each slope is, that gives you a sense that you can trace it. Of course, uh, the functions can be extremely complicated. And then you might wonder, uh, how is it possible to trace anything like that? Oh, that's very important, okay? So uh, you need a sort of rigorous dis discussion of it. But intuitively, the answer should have been yes, because slopes tell you uh, how to orient the small line segments. And if you orient the slow, uh, small line segments, uh, that forms a picture. And that picture will be the outline of the curve, okay? So even though I do not know how to write a formula for, for, this, uh, for the outline of curves, it does not mean that, uh, that such an outline doesn't exist. So for example, here is an outline of my uh, face, right? Uh, it's very hard to describe it using the functions we have here, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, there is no outline, no such geometric statements. So you would guess that uh, the answer is yes. It's possible to define uh, define a function whose derivative will be that. In other words, it's possible to use the, the slopes to trace the outline of the actual curve. Make sense? And, uh, and then how do we prove that for all continuous functions, uh, um, it's actually possible? So, I mean, this is a continuous function. This is a continuous function. It's even differentiable, even better, but in particular, it's continuous. So uh, I will present it one way and then I'll try to connect everything together. So uh, we are going to define a new type of function, new type of uh, expression. And we will say that given a continuous curve y equals to f of x, we will call capital F of x. Notice what I do is it's, from, it's an integral from a to x and I switch the variables here it's no longer i will explain at the end of the lecture why i do that but it's no longer x it used to be f of x and now it is uh, f of t dt okay so f of x is integral from a to x f of t dt and i call it slice of cake function and this is why i call it slice of cake function so suppose your favorite aunt and jemima bakes your cake uh, because you're in calc one, of course, the cake is two dimensional. But if you go uh, to higher dimensional methods, you just uh, train a little bit, you can easily deal with 12 dimensional cake. So for example, that was the cake I baked for my probability students, which was about you, 12 dimensional for 12 students that come to this lecture. Right, so, so uh, yes. So the crust of the cake, here is the crust of this cake, right? So Im imagine, uh, because we're only in Calc 1, again, guys, it's not a serious uh, difficulty. When you bake a cake, and you probably know more about baking cakes than I do. I only know it in theory, right? So when you bake a cake, you have a sort of uh, baking pan. And the baking pan, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in the baking pan, the bread or the cake will rise, and it will form a certain outline, right? If the baking pan happened to be one-dimensional, that's for us, right? You can, if, you're, if you're worried it's not realistic, go to Calc 3. Uh, for us, the baking pan is uh, somewhere in interval from, uh, from, let's say, some point here to some point here, right? So from some point here to some point here is the baking pan, and the cake, um, uh, the cake's crust is given by the outline y equal f of t, okay? So what you then uh, discuss is how much cake. Your aunt asks you how much cake would you like? And because she knows that you took calculus, she will ask it in this form. How much cake do you like? So she will make a cut at the point A and, uh, then, tell, and then brings the knife or scissors to another point X and you, you specify this X. So when you tell, give me uh, this X, this particular number here, then here this piece of cake is, is carved out and, uh, and, then, uh, and then this represents how much cake you will be getting. The integral, right, from A to X represents uh, how much, in this case, area you're getting or how much cake you're go going to have for yourself. Make sense? So it's a function because uh, if I choose to cut it in a different position, I will get more of the cake. If I, if I bring the X here, I will get less of the cake, correct? And uh, let's see 
a simple comprehension check just to be sure that you follow the cake analogy. Uh, so again, we have this thrust and we have this uh, cake cutting function. And I want you to describe uh, in very simple non-mathematical words, assuming that the function f is non-negative, the crust is not dipping below the x-axis. Uh, what is it that you are saying if you are saying uh, x equal to a? So in this function, you are saying x equal to a. What are you saying in non-mathematical language? Question make sense? We are talking about the cake, right? What is it that you have communicated? So the x piece of cake is equal to the a piece of cake means that the height and the width is the same is uh, well just so uh, one second so uh, what do you mean height which height so x is, is so so the your aunt is she's making a cut at the point a right that's that's one point at which slice is made and to car carve out the cake there must be another point so a was picked and now, so, uh, and after the slice, uh, she moves the knife or the scissors, whatever you like. She moves it uh, uh, to the position where you specify, to the X you specify, and cuts. And now, uh, now the piece of cake that you're getting is from A to X, uh, this piece of cake, which is, uh, and how much cake you're getting, it depends on the crust. It's the integral from A to X, F of PDT. And Melissa, uh, you are, um, uh, you are, uh, you, you said it, uh, you say it's very good, right? So when you say x equal to a, you are you are saying this to your uh, uh, to your aunt, right? You are saying, you aunt Jemima, or forgive me, but I am not hungry and I want no cake. If you understand <laughs> what this means, right? That's what you are saying. If you have aunts like this, you know when you say don't give me cake, they do not like that, right? It's precisely what they will hear. Okay. So now. The question is, my darlings, what happens if I select a point B below A? If I want to cut it, as I say, well, not here, but cut it uh, over here. What are you telling your aunt? That I want a larger slice. Mm, be careful, right? So you still look at it, right? Here is, is one cut. Right. And again, the function is defined like this. Be careful, right? This is what, uh, what, what aunt understands that you want from it, okay? This is uh, fully uh, what, what she would understand. Uh, so the question, so now I want X to be, let's say, uh, in here. What yeah. are you telling your aunt? So you get the, yes, exactly. X here was in front of, uh, it's a notice. Uh, what we just, what Melissa described and what we agreed is that if you say X equal to A, you are saying that uh, I'm not going to eat your cake or as I wrote it over here, right? Forgive me, but I don't, don't want cake. You don't want cake, basically. Right. If you say x equal to a, what, 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 what cake you get? It's the integral from a to it's a. It's basically the so opposite of what the, it's the opposite of the original function? Well, opposite is a vague word, right? So, Fine. Uh, right. Opposite of the original function, what is opposite? I'm not sure I understand, right? So, but basically, first of all, well, it's, one okay. second, Joe. One moment, Sorry. and then uh, so so if I plug in a, do you all understand that I get zero, right? Zero k. Okay. That's what Melissa said, and that's what we agreed. Okay, wonderful. Now, what happens if I select uh, b? If I if I say cut it, uh, cut the cake below a, so to speak. What uh, what are you telling your aunt? Come on, uh, I, I am especially waiting uh, to hear that from girls. You should understand it. You're amazing. <laughs> no cake? No. No, 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 no. But B is here, right? This is too funny. No, can you explain? Can you, like, go? I understand the analogy, but what, what's the question now? The question is, uh, you, uh, you're talking to your aunt, right? You know your yes. aunt better than me, I hope, right? This is your aunt. Your aunt is, uh, is, is, is this uh, integral function. You yeah. tell your aunt B, right? You, tell, you say B, and B is below A. I'm asking you. What is she going to do? What's your aunt going to do to you now? Give you the side of the cake. I don't know, the first piece. Mm. Yeah, here is your function, guys. I'm testing your, uh, your, your perception of this function. Get negative cake, Melissa, exactly. So what, does she, what is your aunt going to do? She's going to take fingers, put it in your mouth, and make you throw up this amount of cake. I understand. OK? It's going to be negative cake. I understand. You understand? I do. Good. 
Well, so understood. no cake? What no, no, I mean, I mean, you're worried about your, you're worried about your same auntie. I worry about my finger, please remove some cake from me. So, so you know, and then the uh, integral it, begins at A. Because, because, so the because B is less than A? Exactly. Exactly. Remember in the previous, in the previous integration, guys, in the previous integration right. that we, we started, uh, we understand it as a limit of a Riemann sum. That means negative area. If if, so f, if f is if f if the crust of course is positive, right? I'm assuming. Right. Okay, this is the function. Of course, crust can be dipping below the x-axis, and then the meaning is uh, that you have some anti-cake. So speak a cake, which is so magical. You eat it and you uh, lose weight because of it, right? It's it's, it's taking away calories. Right? So basically, we were thinking too much into it. In what dimension, Professor? In which dimension? This is in two dimensions, but it works in, in all sorts of dimensions, right? So, um, make sense, guys? Yeah. Cool, right? <laughs> and now I want you to carry out... <laughs> good, good. Okay, so that's, I mean, you know, for me, that's one thing I find enjoyable about certain things in mathematics is that you have what, what you call silly stories, right? Also, also sometimes very offensive ones. So you can offend people, I told you, right? There's a problem I'm, I'm writing for my probability students, which is mm -hmm. a problem over which uh, one person uh, blocked, me, uh, blocked me from their phone. Oh, and it's, and it's okay. completely mathematical, you see? It's like, it, it's relationship between the phone. You see, so that's what I mean. You see people so in certain instances, they don't perceive things mathematically, right? And they actually perceive it very personally. They don't even realize it's a mathematical question. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you understand? Uh, why, why confusing? I mean, you, you can have many analogies. This is uh, the crust, right? This is the cake. That's my analogy. But naturally, there are many analogies, right? And uh, this is a function that you just have to interpret what it does. Yes, yeah, somebody blocked me from my phone, correct? But it's okay, you know, uh, people recover. So... So here is a, a task for you guys. Uh, I want you to come up with a simple formula for, uh, so, so, okay, so here we have f of x equal to x and capital F of x equal to the integral from zero to x of t dt, okay? And I want you to try um, to try to come up with a simpler formula for capital F and to say what's the relationship between capital F and little f. Do you understand what I'm asking? <coughs> so, uh, so you see, this formula is something you are not familiar with, right? It's an integration from zero to x t d t. I want you to find a simpler expression for it, not involving integration. Okay, and do that uh, possibly for a first, and then we'll see how to do it for b. This all has to do with um, antiderivatives you said before. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what I said. I mean, let's say you just come here and you say this expression. Uh, can you figure out uh, a simpler way to describe the same thing, right? So it's a description of a function. What is it in simpler language?
Professor, I can't see the screen. Ah, you can see. Black? Is my screen black? I see your screen. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, you you don't see my screen? What do you mean? Uh, no. Let's see. Let's see. What about uh, here? Yeah. No, it's completely blank. For for the rest of you guys, do you see my screen? I see it. I see it. Should I try? Okay, I'm gonna try something. Give me. You might me. try to log out and log in, or maybe that okay. helps. Okay. Okay. Give me a sec. Uh, Alexandra, the same function, be careful there. What do you mean by same function? Uh, you mean uh, F, X, and capital F, the same function? No. Yes, Melissa, you okay, are correct. Yeah. You're correct. And can you see now? Yes, I if that's the now. case, then, then F of X. Um, lowercase f of x, no, uppercase f of x is, no, I don't know, um, I don't know. Well, so, uh, so here is, uh, here is, what, what, you see, I Isn't can the derivative of f of x, the original? Yes. Uh, so, you can see that, let's Simple. say, let's say we do it. Bro, what? So, capital F of x, I can do Riemann sums. I mean, I can do the yeah. trick, but, but I don't want to go through the trick. I, I kind of taught you it in the reverse. I showed you that, that something works, that you can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate integrals rapidly. But let's try to do it uh, like we are first discovering it, right? So, I know Riemann sums. So, I look at this thing. I take limit as n goes to infinity. I have this quantity. I factor out. Notice, in this case, x over n is the size of my interval, right? So, I can factor x over n squared outside of the sum. And uh, I have uh, x over n squared n n plus one over two. I take the limit as it goes to infinity. Notice what survives. X squared survives here and two survives in the bottom. So it's one half x squared. You see, this is uh, one calculation. Once you train, you can just do it very fast. Okay. So I yeah. see that capital F of x is one half x squared. Okay. It's one specific antiderivative of the of the function x. Now. Yeah. If I do the same thing, let's uh, let's see if you can do the same thing fast uh, for B, and then the others I'll just uh, go over them very fast. Okay, just do B, and uh, find using the same idea as I find found it. Find what is capital F of X. Is it um simply based right off the bat? Can you just do it one over three times X to the third? It could be that, but there are other antiderivatives. Maybe you see a reason why that would be the answer, but uh, uh, you see. Like the last one was one over two x correct, squared. Correct, but uh, you see, what if I cho change the number and I put one here instead of oh, zero? Oh, 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 can you move the red mouse? Okay, fine, yeah. Right, uh, here is a zero, right? Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. you are correct, but it could be that you're correct by accident. What if? What happens if I put one here instead fine, of zero? Let me do the math over again okay. using the same. Thing that you just showed. So, Professor, when it's zero, we just do our sh like shortcuts. You well, I mean, here is the thing, right? You you can try integrating by a shortcut and see what the answer is. But uh, I mean, that's uh, that's what is what you call it. That's already. Mm, I'm trying to do it at least at this moment here uh, without cheating. Like, remember, we uh, we presented the shortcuts before in hope mm -hmm. that you can already see them. But the shortcuts, they are actually a consequence of what I'm discussing today. So today I'm being a bit uh, thorough. I'm just using ideas that I truly understand. I don't understand why the shortcut works, so I'm not using it. I do understand why Riemann sums work, and therefore I can use them. Wait, so you don't want us to use Riemann sums? No, I do. OK. You understand, guys, what, what, what's the difference, right? The shortcut, I could have brainwashed you. I could have taught you the wrong shortcut, correct? Yeah. Which is, in fact, I always toy with the idea. When I get tired, they think I'll just teach everybody everything completely wrong, and they will memorize it, and they will believe me. Uh, Darnell, it is on uh, my YouTube channel. They are all there. Everything I I did here, it's entirely. Professor, it's this. It's what I said. It has to be. 
I didn't say you are wrong. Uh, uh, you might be completely correct. I just want to be sure that you see why, that it's that you understand why. I mean, after I did all of the same steps from the last one, I got I got this I got this answer because um, the only the, things that survive is two over six and um, x to the third. You are correct. Uh, it is it is what you said. It is right. It is uh, it is one quarter. Uh, x to the, so it's it's one one third, third x to the third right so here are um, here is the arithmetic you can see it I take the limits right and it's one third x to the third in if you use the shortcut you would have get, gotten the answer quicker but the point is the shortcut right now we take the position that we don't understand why it works I never explained to you why the shortcut works correct uh, yeah. and and you don't know don't have any reason to it so, so maybe I like it uh, on the other hand uh, let's see right. If I so so uh, for C it's going to be if I carry the calculation it's going to be one quarter x to the fourth right yeah but uh, for D let's say I want to carry out the calculations what do you guess it will be do you have a guess a just guess the, right off the bat right off the bat uh, or, or I just want to see what people would say right. so we have f of x equal to five x minus x squared and uh, capital F is oh, defined do you want us to just take the antiderivative of f of x well, I don't, I, it's not that what I want. It's just uh, the question is, what do you imagine capital F to be? So you see, in all previous cases, right, in A, B, and C, what we noticed is that capital F ended up being a specific antiderivative, right? So in this case, it was a specific antiderivative, not not just any antiderivative, but the antiderivative one third x cubed. Here it was the anti in C it would be the antiderivative one fourth uh, one quarter of x to the fourth, right? And uh, just 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 what do you think? It's a strange question, perhaps, uh, but uh, I wonder if you would say the same thing, right? What would you say is is uh, capital F? Yeah, here? but the integral now is going from one to x. Yes. Okay. So what would that be? What do you think? No idea. Hmm. That's fine. Uh, it's I'm not. You expect us to like get it right? No, off I, I don't expect anything, anything whatsoever. I just uh, I just wonder if because here you right away said uh, yeah it's third x cubed and and I wonder why specifically uh, what made you say that it's one third x cubed. That's why I'm asking. No, yeah, sure. If you carried out the Riemann sum, obviously, right? Yeah. Uh, right. So. Okay, let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Is that hard to figure out? No, I don't think it's easy. Uh, but uh, here I, I, I carry out the calculation. Okay. All right. And I see that that's what I get. I get this expression. And if I take the derivative, I see it's 5x uh, minus x squared. It's again some sort of antiderivative. It just, it might not be the most simple antiderivative. There is a plus constant, right? It's some antiderivative of the original expression, but plus some constant. And that constant does not necessarily have to be zero. It might be seven, it might be five, right? But uh, plus some constant, good? Uh, so this is not a coincidence, right? So this is what the fundamental theorem of calculus is stating is that if you are dealing with any continuous function f of x, no matter, it's just a continuous function, then uh, uh, the uh, cake slice function or the integral from a to x f t dt is going to be a particular antiderivative of this little f. It's going to be an antiderivative, okay? And um, yeah, the last one is not so simple. Can you say that again? Can you say that again? Sure. So all those examples are supposed to kind of get you, it's like, it's like suppose you're, you're trying to notice some pattern or you're, or you're uh, realizing that this uh, is generating antiderivatives, so, right? So this integration thing that if I carry the Riemann sum, it generates certain antiderivatives. So I'm saying it's not a coincidence because, uh, well, this fundamental theorem of calculus in, in, in the form I'm presenting it states the following. If you have a continuous function, f of x, then uh, capital Fx integral from A to X FT dt will be 
an antiderivative for little f. It will be some particular antiderivative. In, that, in particular, if you take the derivative of capital F, you will get this little f. Notice what I did here. I, I integrate from a to x, and I switch the, the variable from x to another uh, parameter, let's say t. Okay, I will explain at the end of the lecture why I do it. Okay, what is that thing? But uh, I, I I don't keep the x. Here. Notice it's not the x here, but it's some other letter. Okay, so uh, by definition, here is a, let's say how do we know the derivative of capital F is little f? Well, let's try to take the derivative by definition. Yeah, so I take the derivative of capital F by definition. I take limit as h goes to zero of the expression that you see over here. Uh, that's limit as h goes to zero, one over h f of x plus h minus f of x. And what is that that's limit as h goes to zero of one over h integral from a to x plus h of f t d t minus the integral from a to x of f t d t. Do you agree? And I use some properties of the integral. Do you see here where I integrate yeah. from a to x, and then uh, and then here I integrate from a to x, and then also to afterwards to x plus h. So by breaking up those integrals. I see that this is just limit uh, one over h integral from x, x plus h. Do you see that? Because yeah. uh, uh, here I, I have uh, x is a point in between them, right? So I have integral from a to x, and then from x to x plus h, right? And I can and I remove everything uh, in between. I remove uh, from a to x, so I'm left with integral from x to x plus h, f t d t times one over h. And we learned in the last class that this is just the average, right? So what is this talking about? This is the average of the function f over the interval from x to x plus h. You see that? Mm -hmm. As a limit, this is an average. I will explain yet again why do you consider those functions. But for a moment, let, let's see that this is just the average of f uh, based on what we learned before. And the function now is continuous. So if h is very small, if h is very small, then uh, all the values between x and x plus h are essentially, essentially the same. They're essentially f of x. So if h is very small, then this average is essentially f of x. Because any f of t, where t is between x and x plus h, where h is very small, is essentially the same as f of x. That's a property of continuity. That, that values near the target x uh, are very similar to uh, the target. But so that's a very short proof. Here is your uh, fundamental theorem of calculus proof, is that the derivative of capital F is little f. You see how I did it? I just used the definition of derivative and some properties of integration. You with me? I'm with you. So everything clear for so far? I will give more intuition about why you would consider this. Wonderful, okay? So here is why truly you consider it. The, the idea is, is very clever. So in other words, if you had to figure it out by yourself without any sort of hints, without any sort of similar analogies or some sort of uh, ideas that influence you, it's a very difficult problem, okay? But uh, here is why roughly it's working, right? It's, you can see by a picture, look at it. If I, if I, I have a continuous function and I, and I choose two points, x and x plus h, because it's a continuous function, this slice is essentially a rectangle. The slice is nearly a rectangle, the integral from x to x plus h of this curve is the area of the slice. And the area of that slice here, it's enlarged. Uh, Go ahead. So um, when it comes, you see the x plus h. So x is the beginning of the, of the slice, yes? x is one point on the slice. x plus h is another point on the slice. Mm -hmm. okay. Continue that. Yeah. OK. So if h is, is very small, if h is very small, so this slice is nearly rectangular. Again, why? Because uh, it, the function is continuous. If it were not continuous, I think I forgot to include some simple examples. If it's not continuous, there is no reason to expect that uh, if, 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 if at x there will be an outlier, if, if f of x is here, for example, the limit will actually give you this region, right? If f of x is here, the limit will give you roughly this part. So in the area it, of this of this whole rectangle, it's essentially a rectangle. Why is it essentially a rectangle? Because by continuity, right, uh, the heights all are all the same. Yes, exactly. The heights are essentially of the same size. Right. Those, the, for, those ideas do require more precision than what I'm saying. Because, for example, if you zoom in at a slanted line, you no matter how much you zoom in, you will see that it's slanted. It would not look like this, right? It would still look like a slanted line. So you have to be very precise about what do you mean it looks like a rectangle. But in a 
very uh, uh, very specific ways that all the lines, all the lines, so this height, the height in between, are going to be very close to the same elevation to this elevation. So the area so will end up being. Uh, you, well, you prove it by showing that the error that you are making by choosing any one of those lines as the height of the rectangle becomes, um, you know, very small, becomes uh, unimportant in the limit as h goes to zero. The error you are making is so small that it doesn't matter. Isn't the area one over h as x goes to a, x plus h of f t d t? No, uh, that's the uh, that's the average value. So the area is uh, is width multiplied by the height. So f of x times h, f of x times h is roughly uh, this integral. H being if, the width. H being the width, right? So if I multiply that by one over h, if I take this expression and multiply by one over h, essentially I should get f of x. So it's really just if I if I take the area of a rectangle and divide by the width of the rectangle essentially i'll get the height of the rectangle and that's the idea look at it x to x plus h and then just make a function out of it make a function that generates when you take limit as h goes to zero generates this type of uh, integral and that function is very simple if you take an integral from here integrate from here to here subtract integrate integral from here to here and you get the area of the slice you get that uh, thin slice here okay so the idea essentially is is really geometric, I think, right? It's just height times width divided by width gives you the height. Okay, make sense? So one over h is just classifying for the average of the area. So sorry. One over h is is that is inf one over h as x goes to x plus h of f t d t is the average you're saying? Uh, so th this expression here. Yeah. Is uh, this expression over here is the average elevation in between x and, f and x plus h? So this means the average based on what uh, you did before for it. But even even that is not important. You can think geometrically. If the function is continuous, then all altitudes are essentially the same, right? And so the this integral, if it's to represent area, is essentially the same as that uh, of of an area where uh, all the elevations are the same, and that means an area of a rectangle. So essentially, this integral is f of x times h. Not exactly, right? But the smaller the h, the more likely, likely it will be. But notice, if the function is not continuous, maybe f of x is here. And that's not a representation, right? It's not, uh, it's not going to be what this limit equals, right? Uh, so it could be that, you see, the height could, be, could have been something like this, right? So it could have been that uh, maybe, maybe the function has an outline. So that's, the, that's my height, OK? And then if you take uh, this limit, you will get actually uh, this point, which is not going to be f of x. So continuity is paramount here. The function has to be continuous for this result to, uh, to hold. Well, there are some simplifying assumptions. but So it truly, this, uh, this average you study, for example, in analysis, uh, when will, will it hold? What, what are the conditions where uh, this limit will exist? But for us, uh, we know it will exist, and certainly it's efficient for the function to be continuous. Okay, and you do get, uh, you do give more sophisticated proofs to that. But uh, I hope you understand what uh, what it's supposed to do. Good. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so here is how the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus is supposed to generate the shortcut. I will first show that by an example. Okay. So uh, let's suppose you were asked to calculate uh, the integral from zero to three x squared dx. So one way to do that is to go through the Riemann sums, right? And the Riemann sum is a fairly complicated uh, procedure. It takes uh, quite, it's quite uh, tedious. Good. It's quite tedious, but what we can do is, what we can do is, is the following, right? We can, we can look at this integral and we can define a function. Instead of, this is a number. This, you look at it and first classify it. You cannot get uh, values of x at the end of the operation. It's supposed to be a number. It's, it's an area of x squared between zero and three, okay? So then you can define uh, the function capital F to equal the integral from zero to x t squared dt, this thing, All right? And, uh, and look what happens. Uh, then if I make this definition, then the integral from zero to three of x squared dx that's the same thing. It doesn't matter if I switch x to another letter t. It's the integral from 0 to 3 of t squared dt. You agree? Same thing. But what is this? This is the same as evaluating the function f at 3. You see, I, I realize I can make a function, and I, may, and I evaluate the function f at 3. 
Now, why is that such a great observation? I know something about this function. This function happens to be the antiderivative of x squared. If I take the derivative of this function, that will be x squared. My answer will be x squared. F prime x, capital F prime x, is little fx. Good? So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative is x squared. So that means I can guess, I can guess uh, that my, my actual function, this capital X, is something of the form one third x cubed plus c. I, it must be an antiderivative. And all antiderivatives are essentially the same. That's very important, you see? From here, I figure it's an antiderivative. And I know all antiderivatives are pretty much the same. You can feel that because they, they trace the curve. So all antiderivatives, and you can prove it using the mean value theorem. I hope you know what the mean value theorem means, guys, that I asked you to watch the videos. But intuitively, the, 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 if it, the derivative is a blueprint on how to sketch the curve. So if you have the derivative, the only difference is I can sketch the curve here or I can sketch the curve higher. So all antiderivatives uh, have parallel graphs. So that means that this particular function is one third x cubed plus c. I want to be sure that you are with me, guys. Do you see how I reasoned that uh, this function is one third x cubed plus c? Do you understand how I reasoned? It's very important. It's, uh, it's logic here. Wait, you said that the, fun, um, the, the mean value theorem ties into this. It does to be uh, to make it precise, but uh, we can avoid making it complicated. We can avoid even talking about the mean value theorem. How does it work? It's very simply, right? The fundamental theorem of calculus, if you understood what we just did before, yeah. okay. this function, capital F, is an antiderivative of x squared. In other words, I take the derivative of this function and I will get x squared. That means capital F is an antiderivative. Now I ask myself, what do I know about antiderivative of uh, x squared? I know that uh, antiderivatives of x squared look like one third x cubed plus c. All of them, that's very important. All of them look like that. So no matter how strange is the expression, I know this guy is something of the form one third x cubed plus a constant. I just need to figure out what's that constant. And then I, can, I have a very nice formula for this function. Instead of having integration, I have a nicer algebraic formula to deal with this function, yes? So it's one third x cubed plus c. Now, how do I determine c? So the easiest value to figure out for this f is, is, is the a on the bottom. If I apply x zero here, because it will be integral from a to a or from zero to zero, the area will be zero. So I know that capital F of zero is zero. But that based on this formula will be one third zero cubed plus c, which equals to c. So I know that c is zero. And, though, and so I know that, that this function I'm dealing with is one third x cubed. So I figured out what this function is in much simpler uh, form. So it's one third x cubed. With me? You see how I figured out that it's one third x cubed? I, I know it's an antiderivative. Then by using this uh, bottom number, I know which specific antiderivative because I figure out what my constant is. See, I need to figure it, I, I have to know the constant. For this problem, I have to know the constant because I need to know this function precisely to be able to, um, to be able to use it for calculation. So I know that f of x equals to one third x cubed. So now all I have to do to evaluate this integral is plug three into it. So I have one third x cubed, plug in three, I get nine. You see, and so- uh, Professor, can I ask, I'm sorry. You, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I just wanna make sure you said about the mean value theorem, how does that tie into this exactly? The mean value theorem uh, I, I, ma makes, makes the statement precise. How do you prove that- So can, uh, I, can I say, maybe, maybe you tell me if this is correct. So the, the, the mean value theorem states that if you have a function um, and if it's continuous on, on a closed interval and um, differentiable on an open interval, then your constant must exist. Then there is, they, they, what it means is that the, uh, this, the slope of the average uh, equals to the instantaneous slope. If you watch right. the videos, uh, it's actually, I told you that uh, I was in the videos or in other discussions, I, I, I realized something quite interesting. Uh, it's, it's a show called Ice Talkers. I was flipping through channels thinking about how to present certain material. It was a long time ago. In fact, first time I was uh, teaching both calculus one and analysis, first time. So I was trying to figure out how to present this material. And uh, um, there was this curious situation where uh, a, a driver, a truck driver was getting a ticket, but nobody observed how fast this driver was moving. There was, uh, so I, I only noticed by the art. So if you watch the video, you can see what, what the mean value theorem is, is stating in terms of uh, physical interpretation. All right, so 
again guys there are many things that i hope you you do bother to uh, to check and understand so here is the situation in general uh, so uh, we will but here is the situation in general instead of doing a particular example let's try to see if we can figure what's the general solution here okay so the general solution is this suppose i'm dealing with a continuous function f of x and let's say f of x is x squared right and because the function is simple enough i can guess a very simple formula for an antiderivative capital f is a simple form of the antiderivative yes yeah 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 so that's what it means okay so i then uh, can define uh, this function so you have integration from a b f x dx i define an integral from a to x f t dt notice i switched x to a different letter again wait with that i will explain why that has to be done it's not so difficult it's a it's a matter of semantics if you communicate something uh, you, you, you that you don't make a mistake like for example many of you uh, use uh, vague words like you say it very frequently when you say it very frequently you might forget that it's not clear what the it refers to so can you it, put the mic closer to your mouth i can't i can't really hear you that yeah yeah so i actually placed it away because i figured uh, it makes less noise can you hear me i hear you okay cool so yes uh, so you see i i switched x to t and i i made x as my upper point of integration upper bound of integration and i defined capital f a i suppose a for area of x to be this function and why did i use capital f because by the fundamental theorem of calculus the derivative of this function <laughs> is little little fx correct the derivative of this function is little fx but I'm fortunate enough that I'm able to find another expression for uh, an antiderivative that's much uh, simpler, right? So I have one expression that's simple and one that's not so simple. Okay. So my goal is to try to figure out a description of this not so simple function in terms of a much simpler one in terms of uh, in terms of this f capital. F. Professor, why did you change b to x? uh well I, I because i i want to define and i this is a number i want to, to actually instead of dealing with uh, this number i'm i'm dealing with a function okay okay look at it if if, if x equals to b that will be the same thing right you agree that if x equals to b it's the same thing so this expression is capable of representing the original problem and more so sometimes if it happens frequently it's like you see if you're a fly you see a clear window and you go like this and you cannot go out because you're bouncing against the clear window so uh, what you do here you seem to be making the problem more complicated than it used to be right instead of having a b here you suddenly have x so all, you consider uh, this integral for all possible numbers you can plug in which seems to be hard but this is like uh, like going into 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 a side you know flying away Flying away from transparency and searching uh, and searching a uh, roundabout way, which is actually the way you proceed through many problems, and it's very difficult, right? You you mostly you bounce against uh, against what you see directly, and the path to solve something is usually uh, some sort of circumlocution. You have to kind of move around. You understand? So again, right? So I I I, I switch from my original problem to say, okay, well. What happens if I, instead of this B, I plug in all sorts of numbers? So I switch uh, uh, the parameter of integration to T. So I integrate from A to X, F T D T. Uh, and uh, I put in whatever X is. What I really want to solve is when this is B. As you notice, but I want to plug in B here and I want to solve, okay? So, yeah, so but, 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 but I'm gonna do it as follows, right? So I, instead of doing Riemann sums, which very often they are not going to, uh, to work well. They're not going to work well at all most of the time. So I'm going to do this. I am, okay, I am switching to this function, which is a difficult function. And I imagine I found out uh, a simple expression for some antiderivative. Just like over here, I, uh, I guess that there is one third x cubed, a simple uh, form for, for the derivative. And then I have this original antiderivative form. So, Again, what, what, what do I know? I know that 
by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I know that the derivative of this function is also little f, which means that uh, this, this strange looking function is really the simple function plus c. So make sure you're with me, guys. You understand the strange, the integral function is really a simple function plus c. Are you with me or not? I think, I think. Yes. Okay, to, let, me, let me quickly write an example. So, uh, so suppose here I have an integral, right? And here the integral is from zero uh, to x, right? Of cosine t dt, right? So this is possibly something that looks scary, correct? I mean, you don't know what to do with it, but uh, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative of this expression equals to cosine x. So what is, what is your guess? What sort of function is this? What is this function equal to? I don't want the precise answer, but what is it roughly equal to? Sine x. Sine x, very good. So you see, and that's already simple. There is no integral. So it's sine x, but I do not know, you see, that that's also very important, that all antiderivatives are very similar, right? That you can kind of feel because the, the derivatives tell you, they, they tell you how to draw the line segment. So you can feel why, they sh why that should be true geometrically. And you can prove using the mean value theorem precisely why that's true. So without, without using geometry, by using analogy. So it's sine x plus c, yes? So it's sine x plus c, and to find this particular function, this exact function, I want to know what's the precise value of c. That's what I'm doing here, okay? So this is the ugly looking function. This is the nice looking function. I want to, uh, to express the ugly function in terms of the nicer one. Okay. Okay, so how do I do that? So I know in, in this particular instance that the ugly function is the nice function plus c. I just need to find c. So if this is your ugly function, what's the, what do you plug into it to find c? Just mm -hmm, go ahead. You're asking for this function that you're pointing at right now? Yeah, abstractly, right? So here is a function, right? Okay. I need to find c. So the ugly function equals to the nice function plus c. What do I plug in here? to figure out what is this constant c. There is only one thing that's very easy to calculate using this ugly function. F of what, t. What, what do you want to put here? Oh. Um. Uh, Melissa, when you say uh, uh, same values, uh, so what do you mean? Uh, specifically, if this is my function, this is the ugly function, what is an easy value to plug in? So most values you put in here, they are very complicated. Um, you mean, but x equal to a, I think. You don't mean x minus a, you mean x equals to a, correct? I, I think I imagine. Yes, wonderful, and you are correct. Only if you plug in A, look at it. Plugging B here, this is very difficult perhaps, right? But plugging A, there is no calculation needed. If I plug A here, what is this equal to? Plug in A, this equals to zero. Beautiful, Mario. Plug in A and it equals to zero. So that's exactly what I will do. Look at it, I plug A here and I plug A into my simple function. Simple function is one I can use to calculate, right? Plugging A in here, it's zero. So zero equals to F of A plus C. So here is what we get. So that means that C equals to minus F of A, which means my ugly function equals to the nice function evaluated at X at the top value, minus the nice function evaluated at the bottom value. Okay? Uh -oh. And now look how that helps me calculate integration. So I'm explaining to you why that uh, short had, shortcut works. Suppose now I want to find the, uh, I want to find this integral. I want to find this integral, yes? So what do I do? I guess, I guess if, I may, if I'm lucky, I'm guessing uh, some simple form of an antiderivative, right? So why, why do I do that? Because look at it, this integration is, is, uh, is what? It's really the same thing as uh, the ugly function at B. 
because that's what they're plugging, right? They just convert this expression to uh, this expression and plug in B. So it's, so this is just the ugly function evaluated at B. But the ugly function uh, evaluated at any X is F of X minus F of A. It's nice function at X minus nice function at A. So if I put in B instead of X, it's, uh, it's capital F of B minus capital F of A, which is this integral from A to B. Uh, let's be sure that we understand uh, how that works. I haven't placed uh, this exercise yet. Suppose I have zero to pi over two of cosine. Dx, right? So what this is saying is that uh, this is uh, this is the ugly function evaluated at pi over two, right? Which equals to the nice function evaluated at pi over two minus the nice function evaluated at the bottom number zero that we derived here in general, right? Now, in this case, what is my nice function? What is this capital F? This capital F of X is what? When I say nice function capital F, it's what? For this problem. Um, exactly, Melissa, it's sine X. Uh, it can be sine x plus seven, doesn't matter, but you can just take any one of them, right? You understand what the fundamental theorem of calculus tells you, right? So the consequence is, the consequence is very simple. It's because I look at this expression and instead of considering this expression, I consider an entirely different one. Uh, well, I consider the function from zero to x cosine t dt, right? And this is uh, a function whose exact value I don't know. I call it the ugly function. So F capital, capital F of A at X. And, and, there is, and, the, and how the fundamental theorem of calculus is used here is that this is a particular antiderivative. You understand? You realize that uh, the area under the curve is a, as a function of X is a particular antiderivative of the function of cosine X, right? And because I'm able to guess a simpler expression for it, I'm able to cheat. I know that uh, this function is, uh, is the nice function plus a constant. And then uh, by plugging in zero here, I know what the, that constant is. Plugging is zero uh, will be, this is zero, sine of zero is zero, so constant is equal to zero. So in fact, this function equals to sine x. So it amounts to plugging pi over two into sine x. In general, uh, this function equals to, because of that, in general, the ugly function equals to the nice function at the top number minus the nice function at the bottom number, okay? And this, in terms of physics, is change of momentum or change of, uh, um, or, or change of e energy, okay? So uh, that is, uh, that is uh, very, that, that's pretty much, is a it's also a conservation mode that you express. You with me, guys? That's yes. awesome. well, that's, okay. well, that's hope so, right? So it's far less convoluted than it might appear. You understand what, what it's just a realization that to integrate, I have to figure out an antiderivative. So here, and I'm interested in what you would say, guys, right? Don't take too much. Let's begin with problem A. Just solve this, right? And uh, uh, solve uh, those questions to the best of your ability. A. B, C, and D. And notice I am not saying anything beyond what I'm saying, right? Just what is this asking? What is question A asking anybody? What you tell me? Integral from zero to X. Well, there is no, uh, uh, there, is, there are no bounds here. So just looking at this, uh, at this expression, what am, I, I have a question here. So this is asking me to do what? Antiderivative. Exactly. Find all antiderivatives, right? So that's what you have to do here, 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 and here. Find all antiderivatives. To the best of your ability, try to do it. Okay. Okay.
Do you want us to solve A? Uh, yeah, solve A, and if you can, solve the others. Didn't we do this just now? Um, well, let's say A, maybe it's easy, right? Uh, I want you to do A, B, C, uh, and D, right? So I want to see what you would say for those questions. More so than for A, I want to see what you would say for B, C. So for A, you're ready, guys? I'm sure you are, because we did this just now. Right? Yeah, it's sine x. Sine x plus c. Plus c. Plus yes. C. What would you say, then, is the answer for B, C, and D? I honestly have no idea. I'm sorry. Professor. No worries. No I let worries. You down. I let you down. I let, I don't, uh, no, no worries. I, just, uh, I, I want to see what you would say. Also, I'm sick today, so I don't know if that might be, infl maybe, you know, affecting me or whatever. I didn't say it's easy. I didn't say it's hard. Just, uh, here are three questions I threw at you. Well, look at it. You infected uh, David. Just make it sick, and now David is sneaker. I don't get how you can do B, though. I just... David, what did you say? No, I'm debating B also. Yeah, like, dude, B, I just... I'm... I'm uh, okay, I did A. Good. Yay. <laughs> so would good. it be one-third... Like, E raised to the negative one-third no. X cubed? I was, no, because he's talking. I don't think so. Based on what we were talking about before, it shouldn't be that. Right. I'm just uh, seeing, see, so in a moment, I'll give you maybe a minute or two more to think, and then I will tell you what you I'm can say. I'm moving on to see. You can Professor, move to any, yes. When I watched your videos about this fundamental of calculus, you did it in a different way. Well, who knows, right? I was a younger well, person. <laughs> That's why I'm a little confused. I didn't understand actually what you did on the video. You just changed. If you had X, you just did the the derivative for this. You just changed the letter, and that's it. That's the derivative. But I yeah, don't know like, what's the reason for it. Right. Oh. Exactly. B would be B would be e to the to the t squared. Ah, so yeah, you, you saw you saw that you saw it in my video. No, no. Oh, good, I, good, good. That's fine. I uh, told you, but but I don't know if if it's if it's now because before I tried to do it and you said it's wrong, so I'm like, okay, no, no, no relax, wrong. guys, guys, guys. Uh, you have to know one thing. First of all, try to train yourself to not react. Well, I say wrong or I say correct. What does it matter, right? No. You uh, you try to. It's very difficult, by the way. Right? It's very difficult to avoid influence uh, or or bad influence, right? So any person, especially people in authority or people you believe know more than you, they might influence you one way or another. It's very hard not to be influenced. We actually had an, an interesting conversation about it with uh, one of you a few days ago. Right? It's extremely hard not to be influenced. I really like what the person said about it. Uh, so uh, 
So when we get to that, when we just change the, the X to T or X to so, U, whatever, just explain why. Yes, because yes, yes, yes. yes. So again, video. guys, what were you, what did you have to do? You had to, exp to find all antiderivatives, yes? That's it. Uh, right, so here you can, you, for cosine, you can guess a simple formula, right? But for uh, the other question, like this question, uh, you will never, Yes, a simple formula because, and that's by the way, you need abstract algebra, very, very deep ideas, Galois theory, stuff like that, to prove that uh, you cannot describe using the vocabulary of elementary functions uh, what the antiderivative will be, right? In other words, uh, you see, e to the minus x squared, uh, does it can, you cannot, using finitely many expressions of the form of trigonometric functions, exponential functions, or polynomials, or rational functions. If you think about the type of functions you know, you know uh, what? Maybe algebraic functions, maybe uh, exponential functions, and, uh, and trigonometry. That's all you know. Those are just like you have uh, three letters or three words, right? So you cannot describe this antiderivative using those words. Even though the derivative it looks simple, you, if the derivative is described using exponential and polynomials, you cannot describe uh, the antiderivative using those words. You take my word for it. It's not a simple result at all. It's extremely difficult. So it's very, very deep result in mathematics to know uh, when something can and or cannot be expressed, uh, you know, like, I mean, meta language, so to speak, right? So uh, is, is Alexandra here? I mean, or, or she left? Me. I think she left. Me. That's too bad. Well, so. It's, it, it, so you see, I had a student, right? Uh, it was an actual exam where I gave problems like this. And the student uh, did not bother uh, learning uh, the antiderivative stuff or did not want to do them on the exam. And for all the answers, he wrote, he wrote like this. Even let's say for cosine, he wrote uh, just integral from, X, uh, from zero to X cosine to dt plus C. And uh, the person received 100 points. Well, of That's course, why because we'll why the person is well, because um, I was first of all very impressed uh, uh, that here you see that's what I mean is not is uh, not really just trying to follow what somebody tells him right he just uh, he took he might have not learned the procedure uh, or another or maybe you know didn't want to carry it out to the exam but he understood something that I wanted to explain that this is a description of an antiderivative. You just describe it in terms of area under the curve. So, so, so this is like area under the curve plus C, right? Because he realized an antiderivative of cosine is uh, is this uh, cake function for cosine plus a constant, right? The, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells you that this is uh, the cake function gives you an antiderivative. You understand? I mean, uh, you might say that this expression isn't particularly nice. I mean, it doesn't help you calculate it. So well, it's true, technically right? not wrong. Uh, but it's, it's technically, uh, legally speaking, right? I need to study to be a lawyer, right? Uh, here you go. Legally speaking, it is above reproach. You understand? It's beyond reproach. Wait, professor, if you put that answer, cosine. Ah, depends how I ask the question. Depends how ah, I ask exactly. the question. So, so for how example, do we if, know? I, if, if I, oh, well, it's very simple. I mean, you, how do you know? Okay. You, uh, you can argue with me, you know, if you say, that if you say, the, but, but I answer the parameters of the question, you read the question and you answer it. So for example, I say, uh, find uh, the, the integral of, uh, from zero to five of x squared dx, right? By definition or by, by Riemann sum, if you find it using another procedure, then I can disqualify you because you didn't carry out my instructions. But if I just say, mm -hmm. find the integral from zero to five of x squared dx, I cannot disqualify you for using shortcuts, correct? Because you found it, you, you, you carried out uh, what I said. And in fact, if you're clever enough and you can say, you know, so, so some people have jo a joke, let's say find X and somebody writes, here it is, right? You know the shortcut. So if you first came up with such a joke, I would have given you 100 points because I think wonderful. You think outside of the box, you think. That's what I try to, uh, to train you to Professor, do. Professor, yeah. can I tell you D right now and tell me if I'm wrong? Uh, one second before you do, I just uh, I just want to, uh, to you understand, guys. So you, just to, to to explain how I would I would avoid or try to prevent you from uh, from answering it this way. Afterwards, after he did it, I I, I rewarded my problem so people don't uh, give me such answers. So even though and I I would have not rewarded, but I explained what the student is doing because if you did it uh, on your own, I would be very happy. It's just uh, it's just I would say 
express the antiderivative in, uh, in in terms not involving integration, for example, or use only simple functions to uh, to express the antiderivative. In that case, uh, writing this will not qualify. Okay, but uh, but you see the questions I gave here, except for a, all the other questions. Uh, let me give you a hint. You will not be able to find, uh, uh, no matter how a much simple. you try, a simple expression. It doesn't exist. Right? And, and it's a it's a huge deep matter to to prove that uh, that a simple expression doesn't exist. You understand? It's like you're saying there is a, the vo the vocabulary of simple functions is too limited to uh, to be used finitely many times and express the antiderivative. So uh, you wanted to do B or D or what? What? What uh, did you want to do, Joel? Which question I'll did you want to do? D. Okay, go ahead, do D. So D is just going to be for a zero goes to. Is it going to be zero goes to X or U? Well, so you or, tell me. X. Uh, well, what what is the fundamental theorem of calculus saying? So. so uh, okay. So explain. Okay. <laughs> so I'll go through all of them, right? So then B. What is B? B cannot be expressed simply, but I can write it as the integral from zero to x e to the minus t squared dt. I have to switch the letters, and hopefully by the end of this lecture you will understand why. I switch the letters for now. Just believe me that I have to. Okay, I switch the letters from x to 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 anything else, and then put the x here. Now the derivative of this function would what would result is when you take the derivative is that the t is replaced by x. When you take the derivative, it will be e to the minus x squared. Okay, and because the yeah. original yeah, I, wrote, I wrote x here, you know, your head automatically wants to write x, but this function is expressed in terms of v so i want to put v here and i put t here for example or a letter other than that so for the u i put u because my derivative has to be in terms of u and then i i i put the parameter instead of u I got the rest. yeah but everything everything else yeah. is is uh, simple so now guys uh, okay. we are we are up to the next uh, bunch of questions where you practice taking the derivative of those expressions that i have here you wanted to say something but yeah, I wanted to ask why don't we take derivative of uh, inverse tan? Because uh, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, when you have in the integral of uh, from some number to x of whatever expression, what happens when you take the derivative, the integral disappears and the x is replaced in here, right? So it's it really it's really what the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us, right? Is that the integral of the, of a function of the form a to x f of t dt, its derivative will be just uh, the function evaluated at the top uh, variable okay so here it is right the derivative so when we cannot do derivative so we just change let's say it's v to x that's it or we just change the letters we don't really need to work yeah but, but but think about the content right uh, those are just notations here you are writing a word but what's the meaning of it right so when you write something this is a language this is a word but what's the meaning okay so no, if you if you get to the meaning, then th those things are not arbitrary. Right? That's a, okay. and, and and eventually, if you understand how the symbols are used to convey the meaning, the symbols become simpler, right? So okay. you make you make a connection, for example, right? So yes. it, it, when you know enough vocabulary, you might know the concepts that motivate them, and you understand how they relate to other things. So it really helps again with with uh, for example with uh, with German. Very often you see words that you can then understand what they are supposed to signify, where they are, what what other connections they have. Professor, can, yeah, can you show us what we need to do now? Ah yes, uh, apologies. It's good that I restrain myself from going into explaining to you what I meant by the German thing, right? I mean, so many interesting examples, right? The similar thing, a similar is, is for mathematics. It's that uh, you understand how those symbols are used to convey the meaning, and then it's easier to read it. So I want you to find derivatives of A, B, C, D, you know. Uh, here is uh, an expression. I want you to find the derivative with respect to X. Somebody is afraid, David, that you're contagious. I guess because you're sneezing. 
Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm positive for antibodies. I'm good. <laughs> you are positive for antibodies. I should send yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know how. I should send you that uh, Russian rap song that, they, that you, YouTube yeah, uh, recommended. Yeah, how actually? How much am I actually? Uh... So, how much you are what? How much am I actually like not not uh, the odds of me not getting it again? How much does the test actually work? Is the real question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, you I, here? I finished. You finished, right? Okay, cool, guys. Let me know the rest of you when you are done with A. We will work. A. Just do A and B. Let's say do A and B, and then we will discuss those. I'll be also. Okay. Well, do as many as you like. Uh, do all of them, right? So you're you have you're not bored because we are waiting. Professor, do you want it to always be going from, um, never mind. Isn't it interesting, guys? Exactly 12, just like in my problems. Say again? Just like in my probability problem, exactly 12 students, which is a 12 dimensional cake. I think I did be right. right. And Should the I rest of you, you, the rest of you guys, uh, how are you progressing? Oh, wonderful! Wonderful! Holy wonderful. Hell, that's tough. I hope I am doing it right. I'm doing it super simple. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, good, good. Just before I was watching um, a report about uh, how how people cheat in universities, pretty interesting. So some of some ideas are pretty amazing. I don't cheat. I didn't say you. I didn't. Um, I, 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 it's then right after I say something. <laughs> no, I mean you you take. Uh, you no, take, I don't cheat. <laughs> you take too much. Um, you connect more than than it's connect. It's just completely by accident. It's a YouTube algorithm that matched me uh with a with an interesting title right it's it's how germans buy papers from uh ukrainian um, you know from, in, from ukraine cheap uh, dissertation papers or help and it's really prominent All right, are we ready with A and B, guys? Should we go through those? Mm -hmm. 
¿no? Yes, good. Yeah, so uh, let's look at, um, at problem A, right? So by wishful thinking, you might have preferred having X there. You understand? Because mechanically, what happens when you take the derivative? You take the top number, uh, the value, sorry, not number, it's, it's variable, and you plug it instead of uh, this T over here. So it just, you just look at this function and replace T by X, okay? But here we have X to the fourth. So it, it's capital F of X. Uh, the derivative of this function is like chain though. It's like the, this outer function has eaten X to the fourth. So by chain rule, the derivative is the derivative of the outer function, which amounts to taking this value, putting it instead of t, and then multiplying by the derivative of this uh, of this inner function. Okay, so it's just chain rule applied here. So it's secant x to the four, uh, four times four x cubed. Does it make sense, guys? What happened here? It's that I see here. It's it's just a, a simple. Well, not, it's not a simple, it might be a new function for you, but it's, it's this function that's differentiable. I know its derivative is taking the top value, plugging it instead of t. Yes. And, uh, and then, uh, and be, but, but by chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function of this, right? Makes sense, all right? Now, actually, b is even simpler because when you see x here and you see another variable here, you just isolate this function and replace, uh, let's say, t by x. It could be u, it could be z, as long as it's not x. If you don't want to use the same uh, parameter x and, and uh, x here, I will explain below why. Okay, so uh, then we, we deal with, uh, with c. Let's go through c. Or do you want to quickly uh, work it? Notice that in this case, x is on the bottom. Right, I need x on the top based on the fundamental theorem of calculus. What happens if x is on the bottom? What do you do? Exactly, but it becomes uh, becomes negative, right? What you want is you want to put it on the top, but you can always do that by multiplying the integral by minus one. Yeah, you showed us last time, I think, A and B, and then B and A is exactly the opposite. So you see, I can, I can flip, I can make X on the top by factoring out a negative, right? So you can switch uh, the order of integration and multiply by uh -huh. minus one. We, we, we explain in properties of integration why that holds. So we have this. And now when I take the derivative, the minus, uh, uh, minus is here, and then I plug in x into the expression. D, yeah, I do the same way. I flip, so that sign is in the top, and then I have a negative. And then when I take the derivative, I, I plug in sign in, in here, and uh, then multiply by the derivative of sign, which is- constant. Professor, if you looked at my paper, you'd think I'm crazy. I did not do, I, it's way more simple than I thought it is. That's okay. I, I see, so it's simple. Is is to it's a concept, right? If you get not the concept, simple, I, it's just that I I was overthinking it the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like if I showed you my work right now, you'd be like, "What on earth?" So no, I mean, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not my own, but it's, you see, guys, uh, there is there are several uh, ways. Uh, so you you begin understanding things sometimes. Well, you you you, you figure out what mechanically you do, right? That's one to, sort of understanding. A deeper understanding is that you realize why something is true. And they, an even deeper understanding is uh, why it's elementary obvious where something is true. That you, can, you come up with very obvious reasons. So you see why it's true, not just that uh, you, you know some theorem makes it true. Right? So there are sorts of, all sorts of uh, complicated phases. So in E, what do you do in E? So you have to take the derivative. You have it, it's from cosine to sine of some, some expression. What do you do? Which one? Uh, e. So you see, we have cosine. We have we have two things: cosine and sine. Oh. Yeah, I will scroll up if you prefer. Here, e. How do you do e? Uh, 
Professor, can we separate them? Yeah, that's exactly. what I was going to ask. Can you, yeah, can you separate it? But, but you see, I, I hope you mean we can separate. You, you see, when you ask me, that's, uh, that's uncertainty, right? You, it's like you are telling me to decide whether that's true or not. What am I, right? You can decide your own. Know. But I don't know, I mean. No, I mean, but you, say, you said separate. So I'm assuming it's a polite form of saying separate. Why not, yeah, right? I put, let's say, X on the top and give the cosine and then plus. Well, you don't want X, you want the number, right? Uh, you want yeah, any number, right? So C. That's a C, precisely. Constant. Remember that C does not have to be between cosine and sine. Remember, we proved that it can yeah. be any number. It can oh be anywhere. God. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Uh, so what we do, wonderful, but that's very good. So we, we integrate from excited. cosine to C. It's good. It's integral from cosine to C and then from C to sine. We break it apart because, again, we, we want to only see one function at a time. And then uh, I will put here this part in front, and this I will flip so that the cosine is on the top, right? So I see now an expression where, which I know how to differentiate, and here is another expression which I know how to differentiate. So what happens when I take the derivative here? I take the sine, I put it instead of v, and multiply by cosine. And then minus, I take cosine, put it in here, times the derivative of cosine, which happens to be minus sine, and it, because we had an, an extra negative, that becomes a plus here. In general, here is the general pattern. If I have any function a of, a, a of x, could be in constant, right, to p of x, the derivative will be plug the top number in f, multiply by its derivative, minus the bottom number in f times the derivative. So this is your derivative expression. Good? Yes, Professor, can you wait one second? I want to copy the... Sure. This is on the website already? Oh, yes, it is. All of it is, um, is available. Exam 3 also is posted if you're, uh, you know, I, you, you saw my message. Okay, I'm done. And by the way, exam three, I, I already started. I don't know, I did like five of them, but I don't know if they correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, and, and there is also practice exam for, uh, you know, there is a practice exam, I think, for, uh, for calculus, at least uh, so it says in some emails. So there's practice material, you can look at it as well. Now, uh, for f, uh, we take the derivative uh, of uh, the integral from x to x cubed of e to the minus t squared dt, right, of this thing. Yes? Uh, and what's the, what's the derivative of that? Again, by this property, which again, you, how do you verify it? You just put a constant uh, in between and, and you do this operation. It's very quick that you can figure out what's this derivative. So what you do is you plug in uh, x cubed, multiply by the derivative of x cubed, so that's what happened here. Minus, you plug in x, multiply by the derivative of x, which just happens to be one, okay? Um, and then there is, I think, one final, I think, g. Question g, guys, can you figure out how to do that? Look at it. Bro. It just looks scary, but it's not, right? Yeah, I, need to watch, I need to watch the videos again. I, I, it's, I'm not saying you, you taught it, Perfectly fine. It's just like my head's not in today. I'm That's sorry. Fine. <laughs> why, is there, why? What am I doing to you? It's a scarecrow problem. There's nothing here. It just looks scary, but. All right. Can we divide anything? By well, something? figure out. Look at look at it. Right. Uh, it's, it's something that. Yeah. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, what's the difference, guys? What, what happened here, right? Uh, you are in the wilderness and you observe, uh, Melissa, right? You like biology, so you observe new animals, right? And uh, what have you observed here? What happened here? Do we find first the top one and then the bottom? 
Doesn't matter. Well, you sense. have to find the derivative of this whole expression. So when you say find the, the top and then uh, and then the bottom for the I'm whole sure. thing, right? Is there I'm no not simple... sure what what you mean. Uh, well, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> New because animals the, do need to be differentiated. Huh. That's okay, how you Google the animal, but this is like that. Google. <laughs> True. Um, is there no? I don't know where solution? to start. I would start from the like the small one from small integral. Find this answer, plug it on the top. I don't know, but if it makes sense, maybe it's stupid. No, I would. I would say that what you would do is probably take the the the. Dude, I need, to, I need to learn the mathematic way of talking, bro. <laughs> like first for like stem one, bro. If you like, I could talk all day about what we learned in the first half of the semester, mm -hmm. like in math. Yeah. Terms. But when it comes to this, I'm just like beat. Me too. Well, you see, yeah. it's funny that you understand each other, uh, and I do uh -huh. not understand you, right? But uh, but oh. uh, well, <laughs> yes, that, that 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 is pretty interesting, I find, right? So first of all, you are. In the vent, and you are watching uh, through binoculars. You are seeing uh, this, and those are animals. Uh, what are you seeing? What happened here? Imagine you are seeing very alien animals, right? This is, by the way, not that alien. They can be worse. A homotopies. I can, I can uh, sell you a horn. I think I mentioned about homotopies, right? The homotopy. So, what sort, of, what sort of, what sort of, what sort of animal behavior are you witnessing here? All right, no. Uh, One animal looking scary like this was eaten by another animal, right? It's Chano. So uh, when I so do the derivative, Chico, then you're gonna have you're gonna have. Can I can I can I try? Go ahead. One one shot. Sure. Um, by e to the inverse tangent v, you'll take the cosine two squared d to the t and put it with. Um, since you being eaten, you're gonna put it with uh, the inverse tangent. You you're gonna put it instead of v to be precise. Yes. Yeah, so you take this full thing. Beautiful, right? You take this full thing. And you, that's what, 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 what mechanically differentiation happens. No, you differentiate you this said. function, you take this. But off. I didn't get what you said. Loevanti. Loevant machine, or Okay, well, you didn't understand can what you, I said. Can you, can you explain G from the beginning? I'm sorry. Yes, from the yes, very beginning. So, so I see here, I see here one animal, which is the, you see, so the mouth of this animal is on the top of the integral, right? So that's, that's what I, when I, when I look at those functions, you see, I, I see this creature, which, uh, which looks a little bit like my, because of this uh, e to the t squared, that it looks a little bit like what I saw before, but really its mouth is here. And I notice okay. that when I, that's where it, what, it, what, it, what, it, what it eats. When I differentiate, what, what, uh, what happens is that uh, this piece, it goes, yeah. here, right? So that's what happens when I differentiate those particular creatures. Uh, so what happens uh, in here, right? What I, what I have is I, I have that one such creature has eaten another, because you see uh, here is where the mouth is of this, uh, of this creature, right? That's, that's, that's what you plugged in its belly. So when you take the derivative, this thing goes in instead of v here, it goes here. Right? It's the same thing as if and you were saying as mm -hmm. zero goes to x, and you could replace v with x. Right. So exactly, exactly. Right. So uh, so uh, so again, let me show you here. Right. What is but this? How thing? we solve it? This is the mouth, right? So if this is x, so what happens when you take the derivative is that uh, is that this goes in here. The small goes in here. Goes in here, yes? Okay. yes. And so that's what I have here, right? And then uh, what, what I have by chain rule, I have to differentiate this guy. Now, the derivative of that guy is simply uh, this piece goes in here. Cosine x squared. Yes. Cosine oh, x squared. And that's, uh, and that's it. We'll get back to it. It's okay, right? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go on a little bit and then we can return to this. Not a biggie. If you understood all the previous ones, that's wonderful. This is just uh, like if something looks unusual, it's harder for you to process. But really, it's one creature that is eaten another, right? And and when I differentiate those creatures, 
uh, the, what happens is that uh, is that what's on the top it, it it's replacing the dummy variable in this case the dummy variable b. Here is what I want to end up there. So uh, I would like to explain why do we change parameters, right? So in particular, you explained this before. No, I did not. Uh, why do I, I have t here? And uh, why see why do I write uh, instead of why, why when I when I want to say uh, this uh, cake function. Why not just write integral from a to x, fx dx? Why do I change parameter t? That's the question I want to address now. Good? You understand? Yeah. So uh, that's a matter of semantics. Again, what I mean by that is you want to be sure that this is just language, right? You want to be sure that you communicate uh, the idea that you are, you are calculating the area under the curve where you are uh, you can place the knife where you cut the cake, either close to A or farther from A, you understand? The, the, the variable here is the interval. How much do you carve out? The cake has the same shape, but uh, uh, how much do you cut out? So let's consider what happens, what are the differences between capital Fx, which is uh, where parameter was replaced, and G of uh, X, where parameter was not replaced, right? What is the difference between those functions? So it could be an intentional meaning that you communicate. For instance, what happens here? When I, when I say f of one, f of two, f of three, I replace each instance of x by those numbers, by one, two, and three. So if I, uh, if I calculate f of one, that's zero to one t squared dt. Or when I put two here, it's zero to two t squared uh, dt or zero to three t squared dt, that's for three. So far good, because there is only one instance of x. But what happens if I replace, uh, what happens if I put g of one, g of two, g of three, if I put one instead of x here? Let's assume that dx is, is a different symbol. So dx is one whole symbol, it's not x, right? it's just one whole symbol, okay? Uh, so I don't read it as d and x. In, in that case, what I have here is I put in, let's say if I put in one here, I have to put it instead of each instance of x. I put one here and I put one here. So it's now integral of zero to one of one squared. Now this integral is no longer of, of the parabola. It's no longer like this. The integral of, of zero to one of one squared is just uh, this area. It's, it's, it's actually the area of a box. Of sort of a yes. Okay, there. so uh, G of two, if uh, I, I replace X, X was here and it was here. So it's zero to two of two squared uh, DX. That's what happens if I replace two here, you understand? Here is my X. Wherever I see X, when I plug in a number, I replace the X by that number. So if I did not change parameters, I would replace it in here and also in the function. So notice I am always integrating a constant function. So for example, here is the difference in semantics. F of X, it's supposed to be the integral, which is the area under the curve, right? It's supposed to be this region. But if you are, did not change parameters, what would happen? It, here is that curve. All areas. It, it would be, it, this is X. So X squared is the altitude. So it's uh, X squared times X. So G of X happens to equal to X cubed if you don't change parameters, whereas f of x in this case happens to equal to one third x cubed. You see that? If I, and the reason is, is, is very simple. Some people don't write, uh, write, uh, write the letter here. And in some advanced courses, you kind of pretend that the semantic problem doesn't exist. But if you think about it as a computer does, uh, when, you, when you try to evaluate this function at let's say uh, two, you plug in two in here, which means instead of each x, you replace each x by two. So it's two here, two here. So that means you're integrating from zero to two of two squared dx. But two squared dx is a constant form, you understand? So if it's two, so it's just, a, you're, you're integrating over a constant. So your meaning is interrupted. It's very much like when you use the word eat. Americans use the word eat very often and very incorrectly, right? So uh, you, you don't even notice how, uh, how eat changes from, from one object to another. Right, so when you you might say so uh, uh, so when you integrate it, it uh, changes bounds. For example, you say things like that, which is incorrect, right? because uh, it, what changes bounds? The interval might change bounds, or uh, the function change bounds. Or, you understand what I mean? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you look very suppressed. Right? You look uh, very suppressed. Or sound. I mean, I don't see how you look. Mostly, I, 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 I hear. How it was a long day. Yep. Yes. Well, 
Good, it makes sense. You understand now? Uh, so it's a matter of semantics. It's just because if you, if you are a programmer, some of you try to study programming, right? And it's very frustrating because computers are very literal, right? If you accidentally give two meanings to the same letter, uh, you can, without being careful, it's very easy to, uh, to logically you have the right thought, but it's very easy uh, to miscommunicate your idea, right? The computer just literally follows instructions, doesn't try to understand what you're asking the computer to do, it just follows the list of instructions. And that's it. So here, if you did not replace parameters, uh, the instructions will be to always draw a box and, and find the area of the box. But that's not what you mean, this is not a box. You see, this is g of x, and this is f of x. That's why you switch to a different parameter. Do you understand? Yes? Yes. Professor, now I have a question about the final. Yes. Let's say we get into a, I don't know, problem during trying to, I don't know, sign into the final or, mm -hmm. or something happened during the final. It's very old, the program. So by the way. what, oh, what oh. happened then? Who should I connect? Like, who should I talk? It's like, I don't understand it. Well, you don't worry, guys, right? You are, you are imagining things that haven't happened. Right. It happened yeah. to me for on my chemistry test, actually. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, again, all those things are idiotic. So relax. Uh, see, see for if, if it happens, you, you talk to me. I, you know, I'm not very harsh, am I? Right? You, I, I'm trying to yeah. be understanding. Right? If it really yeah. happens to you, maybe I'll do something to help you. Okay? Or at least you, you, you have, have a belief that I might. It happened to me and they didn't do anything about it. But oh, but that's because they're, 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 what, they're in chemistry, right? Uh, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're because they understand that you should not do too much for people. That's why they didn't mm -hmm. do it, right? Because you do more and more for people, what do they do? They just take more and more, right? So uh, when you're mm -hmm. an asshole, nobody bothers, right? If yeah. you're not an asshole, everybody bothers. Exactly. Yeah, you, you can all have my, uh, yes, uh, assuming, assuming you, you come here, you're vetted, so I'm presuming if you need to, you can, you can uh, use my number. Professor, I'll post it in the chat. Uh, try to not spread it to people that I'm uh, not sure, right? Just uh, ask me for, you know, but, but I suppose the people that uh, are here, yeah, I suppose you can post it if you want, all right? Just I'll, mm -hmm. I'll turn off my recording, right? Well, no, so, so, uh, <laughs>